All right, uh, I'm Louis Vera, and I'm presenting my uh, Elodge program, which simulates a card game. It's one of the case studies for the uh, the AP Computer Science exam. So uh, this class, this program contains a number of classes, all the way from uh, the one that handles tech objects to card objects and the eventual GUI. So to start with the smallest object, uh, this one store, stores the um, the data for a given card. So the way it works is you have you declare the card's um, suit, uh, kings, uh, not sorry, kings, uh, spades, clubs, etc. Uh, its rank and its point value, which both depend, uh, which both are uh, game specific. So uh, this is the constructor, to which you pass uh, two strings, one for the rank in the suit and an integer point value, and then from there you have a number of accessor methods which return the above data, and then a uh, a method to compare uh, two cards, which returns a, a true or false value based on whether the rank suits or point values match, and uh, a two-string statement uh, method, which returns uh, a string with the data, the, the card data, the rank, the suit, and uh, the value. Uh, and what so, is the point of the two-string method? Um, usually for debugging, mostly. So when before you get to the the, the point where you use the GUI. When you're debugging, you use the console to just to make sure every card you're using is you know working correctly. You find you find your point values, your ranks correctly for the game. And in order for you to see that data, you're converting all of those to string, and then you're right. using the two string in order to pass the string append the yeah. append that data together. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And so that's the card class. The deck is a little more uh, involved. Now the way the deck handles multiple cards is you have three arrays. One for the for one for the uh, all the ranks, suits, and values, and from there it creates every possible combination of cards. So if I pass an array with say two suits, two ranks, and a number of point values, it'll create all the cards, all the possible permutations up for that deck. So you see this this uh, for loop right here within the constructor. After you've passed an array of strings for the ranks, one for the suits, and an array of integers for the values. All right. So this outer level of the loop will create it will set the, what you can call as the working suit. So the, this is the suit under which cards are currently being created. Then the uh, inner for loop creates a um, handles a current rank. Right. All right. So cards dot add cards is the array that stores all the eventual cards, and it'll create a new card based on the first place, the first um, rank it was given, the, the suit, and a given value. Afterwards, you uh, increment the size of the cards array to handle the fact that you just added a card, and then after that it loops. First it'll, it'll um, run through all the ranks provided, and then after that's done, it'll increment the, uh, the outer loop, and it'll do all of that for every given suit until all, all, every card in the deck is created. Uh, here, after this it shuffles the deck to ensure randomization, I'll get to the shuffle method in a little while. And then after this you have a number of uh, accessory methods, such as the uh, is empty method, which verifies that the deck is or is not empty, uh, the size, which returns the size of the deck, uh, this is the shuffle method. It uses selection shuffle. I'll explain that when I get to the shuffler class in a second. Uh, deal returns one card. If the if the deck is empty, it'll return null. Otherwise, it'll get a card from the uh, from the end of the pile. And because you usually shuffle after creation before you do any uh, any important processes, this will actually return a random card. Uh, and this is this is again a two string method used in debugging. This will return a list of all cards in the deck. And Should I highlight the code that is responsible for that? This right here. Okay. This is a for loop that goes through each individual card, prints it out as seen before, and oh yeah, and it, uh, an important thing to know: it'll know, it'll give you the size and separates cards into undealt and dealt, so you can verify that the deal method is working correctly. Okay. Uh, so after this comes the. Um, hold on. I'll just go into the shuffler method. All right. So the shuffler method. This. You mean the shuffler class? Shuffler class, yes. Yeah, what what is the purpose of this class? Uh, this is to make this is to uh, essentially do the same, perform the same function you would by shuffling a card physically to ensure cards are random are randomized and that each individual game doesn't play out the same way. Okay. So if I was playing elevens, if I had every if every dice started the same way, you could beat the game once and you know mm -hmm. beat it indefinitely more times. Okay. So the main method uh, is essentially a two string method. It prints out the results of shuffles. It uses a tester class for these two, which are actual shuffle shuffler methods. This basically is it's fairly self-explanatory. It has a for loop. It goes through each um, card in the deck. Actually, this is this is the deck. 
No, just use through every card you uh, declare below. And then it'll show you the, in order for you to verify that each, every time it runs, do the cards are in a different arrangement. As you can see, it calls the shuffler method here and here within each, which, within each instance of the for loop. So you can verify that, say, 10 runs of this will return a different permutation every time you do run it. Uh, this, this has two main shuffler methods, one uh, perfect shuffle. Now, if you've ever seen a deck of cards in your life, people tend, instead of just shuffling the cards randomly, they tend to separate into two packs. Oh, right. And sort of like interleave them. Right. And so this isn't act, is actually proper randomization, because after you do this, I think, eight times, the cards will be in their, in their original order. So don't actually use this within the program itself. But, Interesting. Uh, you know, as a little bit of trivia, it's here. So you have a, sh uh, a shuffled array, which contains all the cards that will be shuffled. Uh, two counters. Uh, it stores the halfway location, which is where you would split the two decks that you're going to interleave. Mm -hmm. And so these two if statements handle odd and even number decks. So if you have an odd number deck, uh, the, ha the halfway location won't be at the actual halfway mark. It'll be one after. Mm -hmm. And so this this set, this handles the um, the first half of the deck. So basically, what you have is you have a receiver array, which is a shuffled. And you have values which stores the original number of cards. Now, what this does, within while you're in values, it'll it'll leave gaps in the shuffled array. So it'll assign, it goes by twos. It'll assign a card, the first card to the first space, and the second card to the third space, leaving gaps within which are then eventually filled in the second while loop, which takes the second half of the deck, as you can see here, values dot here was half location here it's values dot length, meaning it, go, it proceeds to the end of the uh, of values which stores your cards. And then what it does, it, it fills the gaps left in here. As you can see here, we, st we set k to 1, meaning that now instead of going 0, 2, and so on, it'll go 1, 3, filling the odd number of spaces. Right. And then for, for here, it overwrites the original array. So the placeholder, the receiver that we just had, gets uh, discarded. And we fill values, the original array, with, uh, with the shuffle, with essentially the shuffle card deck. Yeah. Now here, selection shuffle is more efficient. Instead of doing that, you, uh, what you do is you go through each, you access each space in that array and randomly swap it with another element mm -hmm. until you get to the end, which right. provides like an a actual randomization rather than just like this pseudo thing mm -hmm. that you see uh, in the other method. Right. So what this does is you have a for loop which accesses every element in the array. This generates a random location within the array, cap the values uh, dot length minus one because uh, as we know arrays start at zero. Right. And so if you just access the, uh, the length you would get um, what is it? Uh, Index out of bounds exception. Index, exactly. Mm -hmm. temp values. Oh, this is a placeholder. So the value you access at that location is stored in a placeholder. Now, uh, let's say, for example, the the first element would then be moved there, and then in that that gap that it leaves is overridden with the placeholder. So basically, just swap. Yeah, you're the swapping. Elements, yeah. Right. And then it, it proceeds uh, to the end of the array until everything has been swapped at least once. Okay. Some elements may be swapped twice, but at the very least, you have a randomized deck. Okay whereas you did before. And so yeah, this is the shuffler method. Now, this is what this is the complicated bit. Now, because there are several games like 11s, which, uh, just to, to give a brief overview, consists of uh, nine, is it nine, I think it's nine, cards in the deck where uh, you, no sorry, you have a deck, you uh, uh, lay out nine cards, and you try to join two cards that add up to 11, or a triplet of a jack, queen, and king. Once the card and the board is empty, you have won the game. Now you can actually play this in several different ways. You can play this with uh, 13s, where the, as the sum would be 13, uh, 12, 11s, and the probability to winning change, but there are a lot of common elements. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we have an abstract uh, superclass, which is board, which stores, which gives you kind of a generic board that can be then modified to suit 11s, 13s, what have you. And so these have a number of, uh, of commonalities, Most the first of which is the card, the cards of the other deck. It doesn't give you a length, it just gives you these are the cards currently on the board because the number of cards on the board varies from game to game. Right. Uh, you have a deck that stores all the total number of cards. Uh, this is a boolean, this is used in debugging. You usually set it to false while you're running the game itself. And this of course is a constructor. Now, the board gives you a size which stores the number of cards on the board. Uh, a rank, suit, and point values array as we saw before in the deck class. And uh, it cre basically creates a new deck and deals nine cards or deals X number of cards depending on what game you're playing. Mm -hmm. This is a new game, it shuffles the deck, uh, deals cards to the board, mm -hmm. this will return the size of the board, this will return, uh, this will make sure the board is empty. This is used when you're uh, evaluating win conditions. If the board happens to be empty, 
as well as the deck, then it'll return. You uh, you have one message, otherwise the game proceeds. Uh, this deals a card, this returns. The current size of the deck, uh, this will de this will show you what card is at a given uh, index. Right now, instead of, de instead of dealing with cards, uh, the board and 11 board classes tend to deal in indexes of cards because it's easier than uh, passing the object around. Mm -hmm. And so what you do is once you've, done, once you've figured out the index of the card you want to access, you just refer it to the card at method instead of uh, based, uh, passing the object to constructors themselves or to uh, passing the argument to methods as parameters. Mm -hmm. uh, replace selected cards. This will replace a card that already exists with a new one. Use after you've selected two cards and have replaced them, have removed them from the playing area. Um, Talk a little bit about that enhanced for loop. Oh, this enhanced for loop. This basically says for each uh, for each element in selected cards, which is an array, mm -hmm. deal uh, dk in value deal a card to this location. K in value being uh, the integer value of um, k is an index. Oh yeah, yeah, this is used because this is an integer mm -hmm. instead of an int. Which they differ. Uh, well, sometimes when you're using lists, you have to uh, box and unbox these because lists, you can't use lists with primitive types. Right. And so this just converts integer to an int and deals a card at that index. Right. So the an element of the integer capital I yes. um, allows you to, uh, it allows itself to be inserted in an array list. An array list. Whereas an int Doesn't. can be placed in an array. Right. Arrays work with primitive types. Array lists only work with objects and uh, primitive types used in boxing classes. Right. Right. Um, public list integer. This this actually uh, gives you a list of indexes for all the cards, mm -hmm. judging uh, the positions of each card on the board. And so what it does is it takes for every element in cards, which is again the number the cards currently on the board, it finds the uh, it verifies that, that it, it, there isn't an empty space. As you see, and does not equal null. And if if there isn't, it'll add uh, the index to that card to selected, which is a list of all uh, all indexes, all valid indexes, I should say. Uh, two string returns a, a textual representation of the board, used again for debugging. Uh, there's a for loop that visits every card and it displays them as index on board, etc. Uh, game is one. This this is the win condition. So as you see here, if the deck is empty. It then has a for loop which visits every element in cards. If all of these return to null, which is to say that the board is currently empty, as well as the deck being empty, it will return. F well, yeah, exactly. If any card does not equal null, as if, if there's any card left on the board, it will return false, which is to say the game is not won. Uh, otherwise, it will return true, and it's false. False, obviously. Uh, is legal. Now, these two, these were, these are helper methods, and they verify that any move or any selection you've made either contains. A, uh, a sum of 11 or a triplet, like I just mentioned, a jack, queen, and king. Mm -hmm. And these are actually specified, these are game specific, so they're specified in the, uh, the subclass, mm -hmm. which the one, the only one I have here is 11's board, because it's the one that relates to the, uh, to the case study itself, but presumably if one were to create a 13th board, you would define another place possible differently. Can you place a concrete method in an abstract class? No. So the everything in an abstract class is abstract it's itself. Abstract, right. Okay. So you have to complete the code yes. in a concrete class. Yes. And you do that within the concrete class with the um, the app override keyword, which I'll show you in a second. Okay. Uh, how do you how do you access the abstract class in a concrete class? Uh, super. Super dot, and then you access whatever method you are accessing from the from the super class. Okay. Very good. Uh, private boy, deal my cards. This will just deal several cards from the deck. So if you're if you're dealing like nine cards at the beginning of the class, you would pat you would. So uh, access this method, mm -hmm. and that's fairly self-explanatory. So I'll move on to the concrete class, which is 11th board. Now, as you can see here, it extends board, which is to say it's taking data from it. It's using it as its super class. Uh, this defines the board size, which we didn't in the abstract class, because this is game specific. Uh, it defines the ranks, the suits, and the point values used in the game. Uh, sets I and debugging to false, and then see as you can hear here, super parentheses. It's passing. It's actually passing these values to the constructor of board. It doesn't have its own constructor. What if it has? What if the if, if what you're passing it to has more than one constructor? Excuse, what do you mean? If board had more than one constructor, yeah. then it would depend on what parameters you gave it. And, that, and in the order that's known as a, you gave it. an overloaded constructor. Right. 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 And see, this is the at override signifying. Now, as you can see here. The 11th board class is fairly empty. It only has three methods, or four actually, and that's because everything, all, all the, uh, let's say, all the game generic 
methods have already been defined. All you have here is the concrete versions of the methods that we defined over there that haven't been filled in yet. Right. So you can see at override tells the compiler that it's, uh, it's um, replacing the method scene and board, the placeholder, with the actual game specific method. And see. What is that at sign in front? At override? That's a Java. That's, a, that's how you tell the compiler if you just, if you just wrote override, I, I wouldn't recognize it. Why it's an at symbol as opposed to anything else, I'm not entirely sure. Okay. Uh, public boolean is legal. This verifies that a move is legal, and it, it takes a list as a parameter, a list of cards. These aren't actually cards, these are card indexes, instead of actual objects, like I mentioned before. And so this just returns the truth value of whether this selection has a pair sum of 11, which is to say two cards that add up to 11, or, either one of these qualifies, a triplet of J, Q, and K cards, right? These, these two methods are fairly similar. This one deals with easily is legal. If you make a selection, it verifies that, that selection is legal, whereas another place possible verifies that the game continues, because if the game, if after you select two cards, there are no uh, possible pairs or moves right. left, right. the game ends. And so both of these do basically the same thing. They return the truth value of these two to make sure, the, the only thing they differ in is that this one takes a selection parameter, which is to say the selection you just made, whereas this one just ta deals with all the card indexes, which say everything currently on board. Right. Right. Um, this one, these are, this is where these are the, uh, the more complicated ones. This one ver verifies that within a selection, uh, two cards add up to eleven. And so what it does is it has two counters and two while loops. And the while loops, are, you can use for loops here because uh, you ha you're eventually forced to like edit some counters in ways that aren't possible for loops because they just automatically increment. But uh, what you end up happening is you have basically at if you have a list, let's say, and I'll draw this out because it, it, it gets kind of confusing. If you have, say, five elements in an array, what it does is it has two separate while loops. The first one deals with the first element, and the second one deals at first with the second element. And so what it does is it finds the sum of these two, and then of the first and the third, of the first and the fourth, and so on. And then after that's done, it moves on to the second, finds the four remaining, and so on. And so in this manner, it finds every possible combination, right. which is, say, not permutation, just any two, the sum of any two, because adding the backwards would result in the same sum. In the same sum, yeah. So all the combinations, all the possible combinations of cards in the selection. And so uh, these these two wild loops just handle, as I mentioned before, the first, uh, the, cur the, the two currently selected uh, elements in the array, basically. And so these are two placeholders, right? If the sum equals 11, uh, this is, this is, this is uh, at first I didn't have this. Right. Now what ends up happening is, before, if the sum equals 11, I would return true. Right. Uh, signifying this is that it does indeed consider a pair sum. Now the thing is, the way the GUI works, uh, everything that's in selected cards, if you return value, if you if you say this contains pair sum 11, it will be eliminated from the board. Mm -hmm. So a player who se who selects say a five and a six, and uh, correctly you know, fulfilling the requirement of an 11, and then proceeds to select everything else on the board, it'll also get selected because as long as there's one uh, 11 pair, right. everything else will get taken with it. Now, so see, the workaround for this is that you select the two cards in question that do add up to 11 at K and J, which are the counters for these two uh, while loops, right? Then you clear the array and just add these two values, leaving those the only two that will be removed. Mm. Otherwise, it, it, there's basically an exploit. You could just, you could win every game by knowing this. Uh, these, obviously, uh, this, this increments the while loop, and this one, after the outer loop is incremented, it sets J to the, the element immediately after that, mm -hmm. which is to say, so it won't, they, they'll never be on the same element. Both loops will never handle the same element. And okay. so, Let, let's go ahead and play the game. Oh, you want, can I just go through this one first? Okay, go ahead. And then we'll play the game, yeah. And then so, uh, contains JQK does the same thing, verifying for a triplet. It doesn't use, it doesn't use a, a for loop, instead it just creates a, a array list of strings for all the ranks, which are, which are where the, uh, the jack, queen, or king identity is stored in the, within the ranks. Mm -hmm. And so this for loop adds all the ranks to the array list, and then this just verifies that they contain the keywords, either jack, queen, and king. If all three of them, as seen by the and, and, result in true, it'll, reserve, it'll return uh, it'll confirm that there is a uh, triplet within the selection, otherwise it'll return false. Okay. And so, yeah, that's ba that's everything that goes into the, uh, hmm, the GUI is not here. Okay. Uh, I'll just pause.